Hello and welcome back to our top 10 series. We are glad to be back here on YouTube creating content for all you subscribers out there. Kickstarting our new series, we've decided to take a look back at 2019 and the incredible year that it was for cinema. So here's our list of the top 10 films of 2019. Number 10, Jojo Rabbit. But now they call me a scared rabbit. Let them say whatever they want. People used to say a lot of nasty things about me. Oh, this guy's a lunatic. Oh, look at that psycho. He's going to get us all killed. Starting off our list, we have Taika Waititi's dark comedy war film Jojo Rabbit. Whilst this film won't be to everyone's taste, Waititi daringly blends humorous satire and heartbreaking drama to craft an audacious tale that makes its anti-war sentiment known throughout. With bravura costume and production design, and an array of exceptional performances, Jojo Rabbit is a tender and timely film that takes risks and packs an incredible emotional punch. You aren't eating. No, I am not that hungry. I might eat later. For now, I'm just going to chew on these grapes. Number nine, Little Women. And I'm so sick of people saying that, that love is just all a woman is fit for. I'm so sick of it. But I'm, I'm so lonely. Coming off the back of the directorial debut Lady Bird, Greta Gerwig returned with this superb adaptation of the classic story of four sisters in 19th century New York. With a stellar ensemble cast including Saoirse Ronan, Emma Watson and Florence Pugh, Little Women is a refreshing depiction of Alcott's novel and a cinematic achievement that cements Gerwig's incredible talents as both a writer and a director. And if we had children, they would be his, not mine. They would be his property, so don't sit there and tell me that marriage isn't an economic proposition because it is. Number 8. Knives Out I just buried my 85-year-old father who committed suicide. Why are you here? I'm here at the behest of a client. Who? Leaving behind the Star Wars universe and the divisive fan responses that came with it, Ryan Johnson returned to the screen with a much smaller scale project that provided a fresh take on the murder mystery genre. Both thoroughly watchable and entertaining, Knives Out pits an eccentric family against an inquisitive detective after the murder of one of the family's elders. Featuring sublime performances from Arna de Armas, Daniel Craig and the supporting cast, Knives Out weaves a witty and stylish web of twists and shenanigans. Hey, Benny, you want to ask this guy some questions? Hi, right, what is this? What's this arrangement? Mr. Drysdale. CSI KFC? <laughs> Number 7, Marriage Story. Marriage Story details the deteriorating relationship between Adam Driver's Charlie and Scarlett Johansson's Nicole, following as they try to deal with the heartbreaking pain whilst also attending to their son Henry. A tragic tale that is amplified by tour de force performances from the cast and an endearing screenplay from Noah Baumbach, Marriage Story veers away from melodramatic and pessimistic traits in favour of creating a more tender and eloquent statement. You don't even identify it in selfishness anymore! You're such a dick! Every day I wake up and I hope you're dead! Dead like it. if I can guarantee Henry would be okay. I'd hope you'd get an illness and they get hit by a car and die. Number six, Joker. Not everybody, and I'll tell you this, not everyone is awful. But you're awful. Me? I'm awful. Whilst critics were more divisive with this flick, it was quite a shock to learn that the director of films such as The Hangover and Old School would be taking the helm of a 1980s set psychological thriller following the rise of one of the most notorious supervillains of all time. And there's no denying the film's impact. Earning over $1 billion in the box office against a $55 million budget, Joker is a bold and devastating film that boasts some stunning technical feats including a striking score and an incredible Oscar winning performance from Phoenix. I'm sorry, what's that? Oh, that's very funny, Murray. You know, I'm also a comedian. Would you like to hear a joke? Number five, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. This man is worth $500. And this man's going to collect. He's Jake Cahill, and he lives by Bounty Law. Tarantino returns in full form with his incredible comedy drama following the life of Leonardo DiCaprio's Rick Dalton as the film industry evolves around him, leaving him behind with his longtime stunt double, portrayed brilliantly by Brad Pitt who earned an Oscar for his efforts. You're Rick f***ing Dalton. Don't you forget it. Whilst not quite on the level of Tarantino's very best works, it's nonetheless a solidly crafted and unrestrained flick rich in nostalgia and style. Hey, you could do 
anything you want to him. Th th throw him off a building, right? Light him on fire. Hit him with a Lincoln, right? Get creative. Do whatever you want. He's just he's happy for the opportunity. Rick? Yeah. Number four, The Irishman. Nobody does gangster movies quite like Scorsese. Returning to his roots more akin to Goodfellas and Casino, Scorsese tackled this Netflix crime epic by utilising cutting-edge technology to expertly de-age his leading cast, reuniting with Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci and Harvey Keitel, as well as working with Pacino for the first time, The Irishman plays out like a more subdued rendition of its classics. A eulogy that spans 50 years and 209 minutes, this is Scorsese's modern masterpiece and proof that he isn't letting up anytime soon. And it was traffic. Yeah, it's traffic. <laughs> Wasn't it traffic? Yeah, give me it traffic. Was traffic. What do you what, what do you want from us? It was bumper to bumper. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's uh, it's bad, you know. Traffic. I never waited for anyone who was late more than ten minutes in my life. Number three, Avengers Endgame. He used the stones again. Hey, hey, hey. we'd be going in short-handed, you know. Look, he still got the stones, so. So let's get him. Use them to bring everyone back. Just like that. Yeah. Just like that. With Iron Man debuting the cinematic universe in 2008, Marvel finally started paving its way to crafting a franchise that would rival the likes of DC in developing a series that fans could fall in love with. 11 years and 20 films later and we have Endgame, a fantastic conclusion that delivers a satisfying finale packed with incredible character development, stunning action sequences and emotional impact. Avengers! Number two, 1917. Call off tomorrow morning's attack. If you don't, it will be a massacre. We will lose two battalions, 1,600 men, your brother among them. An incredible feat of cinema, 1917 is an experience like no other. Following two British soldiers who have to dodge bullets and artillery as they strafe across no man's land and through town ruins, this epic war drama boasted some of the finest technical achievements of the 2010s. Roger Deakins' camera work engulfs the film, it never lets up, particularly shining during a certain nighttime sequence with Thomas Newman's score providing a creeping dread. This is a perfect portrayal of the horror and madness of the war-torn hellscape that was World War I. Before we reveal our number one film, here are some honourable mentions that just missed the list. Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Pain and Glory. Ford vs Ferrari. You can stick this bloody sticker where the sun... Hey, hey, Bill. Hey, right. Bill, what seems to be the problem? Well, the problem is that Bill here is an arsehole. Klaus. Tonight, same time. Great. Wait, same time you mean dead of night? I can just take the toys now. No, I go with you. There's no need for you to come with me, really. The Lighthouse. You don't like me cooking? Oh, don't be such an old bitch! Number one, Parasite. Bong Joon-ho has slowly been working his way towards garnering recognition as the finest filmmaker to hail from South Korea, but he didn't just stop there. He went on to create this black comedy thriller that made history when it became the first international film to take home Best Picture, and rightfully so. Parasite is an intriguing social satire that's rife with undeniable craft, stylish visuals and one of the most unique screenplays to come out of the 21st century. A riotous flick that's both entertaining and cynical. Thank you for watching. Have your own opinions? Leave them in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to watch our new content.